please rise and turn towards the back of the sanctuary to face the cross. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. salvation have 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we chant together the introit by whole verse. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy above. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The place, O oh Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, 
Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. People of God, this is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. begun his 
reign. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives, and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Christ has risen from the dead. God, God the, the Father, Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. We sing the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I would like to take this time to invite the children of the congregation to come up for their children's sermon. Still got a couple stragglers coming. There we go. Come on, boys. Come on. Hurry up. Can you guys sit over there? Pacing cam. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I see a lot of bright colored shirts and new dresses and everybody looking great. Guys, what day is it today? Easter! Everybody look around. Look how we decorated the, con the sanctuary. What do you guys see? What are some of the things that you see? The big white cloth on the cross? Yeah. And flowers, the lilies. What else? What else do we see? Banners. Banners on the walls. That's right. It looks so beautiful. Today is such a big celebration. Today is the day we celebrate the day that Jesus rose from the dead. How awesome is that? Now, there's a word that we haven't said. All Lent. And we've saved saying it for right now. Do you guys know what that word is? Hallelujah. Yeah, it's on that banner right over there. We haven't seen that banner all of Lent. And Alleluia is a word that means praise be to the Lord. Praise God. Now, on Easter, we always greet each other with some words. And those words are what I'm going to teach you today. So if somebody says to you, Alleluia, Christ is risen, you would respond to them with, Christ, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's practice that right now. If I were to say to you, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's try that one more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I think we can do better. One more time. Say it loud for everybody in the back to hear. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I think you guys got it. And truly, He is risen indeed. Praise be to God. Alleluia. Would you guys fold your hands with me? Dear God, thank you for rising from the grave. Help us to celebrate 
and share that good news with someone else. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may go back to your seats.
Now his grace to us imparts eternal sunshine to our hearts. The night of sin is ended. Let us feast this Easter day on Christ the bread of heaven. The word of faith has purged away the old and evil leaven. Christ alone our souls will feed. He is our meat and drink indeed. Faith lives upon no other. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Man, I tell you what, last Easter was probably the most depressing Easter I have ever been a part of for reasons that I'm not going to get into today. But I tell you what, that just serves as a beautiful backdrop for the fact of how insanely excited I am to be here today, to be with you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to celebrate our Lord's resurrection, his victory over death and the grave. I think truly for a pastor, there's nothing better than today to gather together with my family in Christ and to celebrate this joyous and wonderful day, to praise our risen Lord because I see in your faces and I hear in your voices the same faith that I hold on to as well. The only thing that I wish is I just wish more people could share in this joy that we have together. And on this resurrection of our Lord, the word of God that is going to engage us is our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, especially the two first verses that I'd like to reread. Where Paul says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel that I preached to you, which you have received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word that I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Unless you believed in vain. You see, with those words, Paul is in no way trying to say that he thinks that the Corinthian Christians have believed in vain. So why does he ask, or why does he say that, if you believed in vain? Well, it's with this, he's actually kind of tipping his hand forward to show us what he's going to say next. You see, in the Corinthian congregation, there are some people who are going around saying, the resurrection of the dead? That's silliness. We're not going to rise from the dead. And 1 Corinthians 15 is how St. Paul argues against that. And he says to this congregation, to say, if there's no such thing as the resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ himself has been raised from the dead. And if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. But in fact, Christ has really, truly, physically, in the body, been raised from the dead, and so you have not believed in vain. And Paul gives two powerful reasons. The only reasons that we need to believe that Jesus has truly risen from the dead. Listen to the first reason. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. So the first reason we believe that Jesus is truly risen from the dead is because the scriptures have foretold it. And what scriptures are those talking about? You might be surprised, but he's not actually talking about the Bible. 
at least not the whole thing. He couldn't be talking about the New Testament and, you know, what we heard about from Mark 16. Because at the time that St. Paul is writing 1 Corinthians 15, the New Testament hasn't been written yet. So what he's writing about is the Old Testament. The Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit has spoken through the prophets over and over and over again for telling the resurrection of Jesus Christ on this glorious day that we're celebrating. And there are so many different prophecies, but one of the prophecies that the early church came back to over and over again that had so much power and meaning for them was Psalm 16, a psalm of King David. And in that psalm, he prophesies powerfully. He says, Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. Now St. David, the great prophet, did not speak those words about himself. Because he did see corruption. He died at a good old age and he rotted away like the rest of us will. But Jesus Christ himself speaks these words through David in these psalms because he alone is truly the Holy One of God and he did not see corruption or decay because he wasn't in the grave long enough. But in fact, he got back up and walked out of that tomb victorious. That is one of the main reasons we believe in the resurrection, because the Old Testament foretells it. But of course, all of that, prophecies, all those wonderful prophecies, Psalm 16 included, wouldn't mean squat if the next thing hadn't happened. The next reason why we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And that is he actually appeared. He appeared to people over and over and over again. He showed up to Peter and to the twelve and to five hundred at one time. And then to James, his brother, and to all the apostles. And then finally to Paul himself as the least of the apostles. These men and these women, they saw the risen Jesus with their eyes. They heard his voice with their ears. They spoke to him with their mouths. They touched him with their hands and they ate with him over and over again. And it is their witness that we believe. They shared that story of how they had seen the risen Christ, the fear that we heard about the women having in Mark 16. They got over and they told it to everyone of how the Lord was risen and we have received their eyewitness testimony that's been passed on down through the centuries for us and it is a trustworthy eyewitness. Because truly they had no reason to perpetuate a lie that this guy had risen from the dead. I mean, still every once in a while you'll hear some cynical people out there say, oh, they just made up that lie so that they could get rich and powerful because that's what the founders of religions do, right? They get rich and powerful. If that were the case, it didn't work out well for them. Right? Think about their lives. Every single one of the apostles, including Paul, died a violent death, except one. And he was arrested and exiled multiple times. It was pretty obvious from the get-go that their lives weren't going to be better because they said that Jesus rose from the dead and yet they stuck with it. And the reason why they stuck with it is because they actually believed. They actually not just believed, but they saw the risen Christ and they trusted that Christ was going to raise them from the dead as well. So, yes, 
from their eyewitness testimony, backed with the prophecies of the Old Testament, we have good reason to believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. But even though that's the case, some people still out there will say, what's the matter? Right? Whether he rose or didn't, does it actually matter? I mean, isn't it more important today when all the important issues that are facing us to talk about how Jesus lives on in the life of his disciples as we follow his teaching? I mean, after all, isn't the point of religion there to teach us how to be good people so that we can live a, a decently happy life and know some peace? I can't speak to other religions. But that's most definitely not the purpose of Christianity. We do not follow the Lord Jesus Christ because it guarantees that we will be good people or that our life will be free of heartache and tragedy. We follow the Lord Jesus because we believe he rose from the dead. It's not the other way around. And again, think of what the apostles went through. Think of what Jesus went through, right? The most perfect human had a pretty tough life. And so being good people on earth is no guarantee that our life will be a walk among the roses either. I think C.S. Lewis said it best. And I know I've used this quote plenty of times in sermons, but I just like it so much. I want to share it again. He said this once after he was, or when he was being interviewed. He said, as you perhaps know, I haven't always been a Christian but I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I always knew a bottle of wine would do that. If you want a religion to make you feel really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. St. Paul says pretty much the same thing later on in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, if we have hope in Christ in this life alone, we are to be pitied above all men. So no, that's not the point of our religion and it's not enough to say that Jesus just kind of lives on in our hearts. Paul won't let that happen because Paul says that the actual physical bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ is a matter of absolute first importance. Everything hangs on that one teaching of the faith. You can think about our religion as a beautiful tapestry with all these different designs woven into it. Intricate, beautiful beyond degree, but there's this one string. And if you pull on that string, the whole thing unravels. That's what the resurrection is for our faith. If that goes, everything goes. The forgiveness of sins, our salvation, the Bible, our morality, the creation, eternal life, and the resurrection. It's all gone. If Jesus hasn't actually physically been risen from the dead, then we're just wasting our time here and we might as well go home. But the good news is that string remains secure. For in fact, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He physically got back up and he left the tomb. And since he rose, you will too. Right? That's the, the other side of the coin of Easter. Is that you're going to rise just like he did. It is the end result, the product of what Jesus' saving work on the cross was all about. It's what life is like in the kingdom. It's, it's the fact that these bodies, your bodies, will rise just like him. And I want you to think about your bodies for just a second. Just think about your bodies. Now wiggle your fingers, toes maybe a little bit. You know what, on second thought, I've got a better idea. All right, I want the, the little kids come out in the aisle, okay? 
we're going to make sure these grown-ups actually know the body parts. Okay? And we're going to, you guys can stay right there. You can just turn around. We're, you guys can do it right in the aisles. Ah, why don't you guys come up? That'll work better. They can see you better. So come on up. Come on up, guys. Stand up. We ain't going to be sitting for this. So we're going to remind our, these grown-ups, our parents, our grandparents, we're going to remind them of two things, what their body parts are, and also what it was like to be limber enough to touch your toes. <laughs> okay? Okay, so we're going to sing Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. You guys remember this song? Okay? All right. You guys can sing it with us if you want, and you can even touch your toes in the pews if you can reach them. Okay? Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Great job, guys. Good work. You guys can head back. You guys did a great job. Do you guys, do you remember what it was like to be that limber, to be able to move around like that? But those body parts, head, shoulders, knees and toes... That is what is going to rise from the dead along with the rest of your body parts. And think about it. When the Jesus comes back, those things are going to be working again perfectly so your head won't be as gray and wrinkled. Your shoulders won't be stooped down with stress. Your knees won't go clickety-clack and will support your weight without pain. You'll be able to feel your toes again. Your ears will be able to hear a pin drop. You'll have the eyes of an eagle. With your mouth you can shout forth God's praises. And you'll have a nose that will make a dog jealous. This is what Jesus is going to give back to you in the resurrection. This new body, restored body is what Jesus gives us and that's why it matters that he rose is that you will rise, you will stand back up on the last day. So on this most holy of days in celebration of our Lord's bodily resurrection worship our Lord with your bodies with your mouth, shout forth his praises with your nose, smell the pie baking in the oven. With your stomach, go up for more ham. With your head, lay it down and take a nap. I know I will. With your feet, go outside and soak in the beauties of God's creation. Hug a loved one. We have that in store for us. And what a joyous day that will be for us. Your bodies will rise just like Christ does. And Christ has risen. And since that's the case, it's going to happen and you believe it. And because you believe it, your faith is not in vain. And that's because, alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to rise up on those feet as we confess together our common Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Begotten of his Father before all worlds. Light of light, very God of very God. Begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary. And was man. 
and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. And in our prayers, we will remember in thanksgiving Thomas and Brooke Eggerman for the safe birth of a baby girl, Tatum Ryan. We'll also give God thanks and praise uh, for Jerry Neiman, that uh, God kept him safe during his short stay at the hospital. And also, we'll pray for the family of Norma Klusman. Norma passed away this last week, and her funeral was yesterday. So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, on this day we thank and praise you for the victory over death in the grave that your Son, Jesus Christ, has won for us. May your Spirit pour down upon your church that you might help us to worship you with our redeemed bodies, these bodies that will rise. That you would help us as your church, as your son's body on earth, to show your love, your mercy, and to proclaim the good news to all the world. Lord, you give us so many wonderful blessings in this life, and we thank and praise you for those, such as the blessing of government. We ask that you would guide and direct our leaders and bless them so that through their rule we might be a people at peace who live according to your will. Lord, you also extend your hand and graciously allow the earth to continue to bear forth abundant fruit. We ask your blessing upon this time of planting. May the weather be seasonable and the planting go smoothly, that it might lead with your blessing to an abundant harvest, that we might praise you for your goodness. Lord, receive our thanks for your many blessings which you give to your people again for little Tatum, Ryan, to Brooke and Thomas. What a joy new life is. And we ask that you would bless her with continued strength and health, that she would grow and mature to live a godly life in service to you. Bless that family as they adjust to welcoming her into their life. Keep her safe until the day that she comes to these holy waters of holy baptism when she will be reborn into your family, our family, the church. Lord, receive our thanks for extending your healing hand upon Jerry during his stay in the hospital. We ask as he recuperates at home that he might be restored fully to health so we might praise you for your goodness now and forevermore. And Lord, on this day of the resurrection, we now know that we can face death with new hope and courage and that we need not grieve as others do who have no hope, but in the trust and the assurance that your son will raise the dead. And with that hope, we commend to you Norma Klusman's family. Bless them with comfort and the assurance that they will be reunited with their mother and all those they love who have fallen asleep at your son's appearing. Help us all focus and keep our eyes locked on that great day of salvation when all sorrow will be put asunder 
and you will wipe every tear from our eyes. Lord, these and whatever else you know that we need, we commend to your infinite mercy, trusting that you hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Two verses. for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death and by his rising again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed 
are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us to you alone, O Father. Be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. This do in remembrance, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ given into death for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. 
Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take a drink, the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Caden, okay, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. James, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Nora, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Grant, Levi, may the Lord bless and keep you both in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
and carries gluten free. Okay. Welcome to the Lord's table. So may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Shipley, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and in soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Eric, Eric, take that off. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. MJ and Callan, may the Lord bless and keep you both in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Brantley, William, may the Lord bless and keep you both in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Israel, may the Lord bless and keep you always, and may you always know how much Jesus loves you. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Anna, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and in soul to life everlasting. 
depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Maria, Clara, may the Lord bless and keep you both in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Case, may the Lord bless and keep you both, or keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
Bonanza. Yeah. Cora, may the Lord bless and keep you in her baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Here. You're fine. We'll just, we'll do this. I just don't, I don't want it over, I don't want it overflowing or anything like that. I just want to make, we probably need to switch those out. That one's probably getting full. Never mind, we're at the end anyway. We're at the end anyway. Welcome to the Lord's table. The true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The true body of Christ given for you. Take and take and drink. The true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. Take and drink. Brooks, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Coyer, Cam, may the Lord bless and keep you both in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Boone, may the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal grace this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Lord's table. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. table. Take and eat the true body of Christ given into death for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given into death for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We rise to the Nunc Dimittis.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I invite you to remain standing if you're able for the Hallelujah Chorus. <laughs> 